Hi there guys, and this is going to be the final tutorial, this will be tutorial number um, 6 in our ball valve, and in this one we're just going to be adding a joint, um, so we're going to be doing some animation and, and jointing this and making sure that everything moves as it should do, so um, to begin with, then we go to assemble and joint, now I've already hidden a bunch of stuff, I've only kept the stem and our body on show here. Uh, we're going to go to joint and we're going to select this here. Um, this component that's going to move is going to be our stem. I want it to move around that center axis there so we choose this bottom edge and then the axis that we want it to move around is going to be on our body here. It's going to be this axis and our motion will be circular. So, put our stem back in. It goes to animate. You'll see this now spins around on that axis. We need her. Now, we need the ball and everything else to turn with this. So, our lever, sleeve, washer, the lever nuts, the ball seals no, they are not going to move with this, but all of that must move as one <coughs> package, so we will go to um, a rigid group, basically have to select all of this, become one rigid group. And now, put everything else in. We should spin this if we go to our joints and we drive the joint. everything turns just as a ball valve should so we have our open and closed valve <coughs> 90 degrees will be closed <coughs> and um, zero degrees will be open. That's the opening and closing of our ball valve there. Now you can see we've got some collisions going on. So we have to do some work on the inside edge here. That's why it's always good to check, especially if you're going to be manufacturing something that uh, everything actually fits together as it should. You can see this doesn't. We've got a collision on the inside edge there, so we'll um, chamfer that away. Go to cancel. We'll chamfer this edge. Uh, seven millimeters. And the same on the other side. Now we drive the joint again. And now you see we've got no collisions. Everything is clear. And our ball valve rotates. Now, uh, the only thing is, uh, I think now, um, this is not quite making a proper seal. There's a little bit of a gap there, you see. Um, the Teflon needs to be slightly bigger than the ball valve, and the ball valve should really be kind of squishing it and pushing it out of the way. So when the valve gets to here, it's actually sprung, <coughs> sprung closed. So let's hide our ball for the moment. And what we want to 
do is pull out the edge of this Teflon a little. The push pull, select this edge, pull it out by 1.5 millimeters. Put our ball back in. Now it will make a proper seal, I believe. Uh, we drive our joint again. Rotate it 90 degrees. Look at the side here, we now have no more gap. That's now making a proper seal. So there we go. That now is our finished functioning uh, ball valve. Uh, there's one other thing you actually, yeah, usually a ball valve would have would be a stopper. Um, so you can only rotate it 90 degrees. You wouldn't actually be able to spin it round and round and round. So um, I think I will do one more video, which will be a stopper, and also um, we can limit the motion as well um, of the joint. That's another thing actually that we can do is um, on the joint itself here. Yeah. Mm. Edit joint limits. So there'll be a minimum and a maximum. So our maximum will be 90 degrees, and our rest will be zero. So if you animate that now, you see it will only rotate 90 degrees. So now if we drive the joint, it can only go 90 degrees. So that limits our joint movement. Um, But there's no actual physical limitation. All we've put in here basically is a um, a mathematical limitation in the software. But there's no actual limitation physically. Um, so we'll add that in. Now usually what you'll see um, will be a little piece that sticks off the side here. And as you rotate that around, it's going to uh, act as a stopper. So um, I'll do one more tutorial video where we'll cover the, the stopper so that you can't rotate the thing all the way around. And I think we'll be done with our ball valve. Um, so don't forget to hit the subscribe button and tune in next time, where we'll be doing the final part of our ball valve tutorial.